Lauren De Laguna, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm trying to like set up all my camera stuff and I'm struggling. I don't know why my computer. I have like a lot of issues with this computer. I know how that goes, believe me. <laughs> uh, we almost always have tech problems here on the kill stream, so uh, no, no hate there. That all happens to me quite frequently. Really? Uh, including with our last guest, he was having problems with lag at the beginning. Okay, now it's switched cameras. Is that, is that the camera you wanted? Yeah, I feel like it's a better camera. Do you disagree? Is it not a better camera in your opinion? Um, yeah, yeah, it looks a little bit better. Yeah, it's a wider shot, so. It's a nicer uh, camera. Like the other one is just my. Just the laptop. Like, yeah, it looks a little bit higher quality. Yeah. 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 Now, first off, um, we talked to you a little bit on the Twitter space. The uh, I think that was last week, uh, but I consider this your first official appearance on the Kill Stream. Uh, so, uh, introduce yourself to the audience. I always do this with new guests, especially, uh, and tell us who you are and how you got here, et cetera. Now, wait. We can't hear you now. Like I said, this is nothing new. <laughs> it wouldn't be the kill stream without uh, mic problems or tech problems or camera problems. And usually they're on my end, uh, but uh, it does happen. It should be working out. Yes, I like, it works I now. switched, I tried to switch to my nice mic, but it's not, oh, I know why it's not working. It's not plugged in, is that? Cause it's not plugged in. <laughs> yes, it's yes. not plugged in. Uh, I do want to switch to a nicer mic just because okay. listening to a shitty mic is like the worst. Okay. And so it should be on a nice mic. Yay. Yes. It sounds better. Okay. Yes. It sounds better now. So my name is Lauren De Laguna. Well, that's my real name, but you get the picture. I go by Lauren De Laguna. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. I'm on YouTube, but I'm not really going to be doing that for long because I just became an attorney last week. So, yeah, so what I do is uh, legal work. Uh, I used to talk about politics, but it's become a little bit too depressing. And I used to be really into politics, which is how I know Alex, unfortunately. Well, I have a political science degree. And so, yeah, I, I was uh, I was actually going to go to law school. A few things went awry. <laughs> I never did. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm a politics guy myself, and uh, I can't kick the habit. So I still I still keep up with it, and it's kind of part of my job, too, to talk about it a little bit. Um, but it's also part of my job to talk about scumbags like Alex Stein. Uh, and he decided to start lying about me. And like the Kendrick song says, uh, don't lie about me, and I won't tell the truth about you. Uh, how did you first uh, meet Alex Stein, uh, just go into it. Just give us the start Yeah, off. so I was like kind of a fan of his. I think it was during, it was either during law school or right after law school, I reached out to him and I was like, oh, I'm a fan. Like, I think you're awesome. And I did think he was kind of cute. So I was like, oh, I think you're kind of cute and yada, yada. And he replied to my surprise and he was like, oh, like we could go, we could hang out. And it's, I see that you're in law school. So I have some legal questions for you. And I was like, cool, I can't give legal advice because I'm not an attorney yet. I am now, but I wasn't at the time. Uh, but I try to help him as best as I could. And um, yeah, so that's how we we met. That's how we like started to get to know each other. And then we met in person a few times. And each time those instances of meeting with him in person went really horrifically. Um, so like one time I was like, yeah, I'd love to meet you. And he told me, uh, okay, yeah, cool. Like, let's meet, but you have to come to CPAC because that's where I'm going to be and I'm really busy and that's the only time I have in my schedule. So I was like, um, all right, okay, whatever, I'll go. And this was during COVID. I was living in Boston at the time because for law school and I just really felt isolated. Um, I didn't have, like, it was a, it's a very liberal area. I didn't, there was like no conservatives. I was like, yeah really into politics at the time like a cringe level of into politics where i it, i was obsessing over it because yeah. yeah because covid was now was this 2020 or 2021 this was probably like 2022 okay so i was a little bit after okay all right yeah but i was still like oh my god the world's collapsing and everything's going wrong and i was just freaking out so alex was like yeah meet me at cpac so I was like, okay, so um, I had just gotten, I think I just graduated law school, moved to Arizona, got a job. Uh, I took, I think a week off of my job 
So it took a week off of work to go to CPAC, paid for my CPAC flight, paid for everything. And in my discussions with Alex, he was like, oh, like, I'll take you on a date. It'll be fun, yada, yada. And I was like, great, this will be awesome. So I go to CPAC and um, while I'm there, some kid, some like 16 year old kid comes up to me and he's like, oh, I work for um, pop politics. Um, I forget the like the girly conservative, cute okay. conservatives. Yeah. He's like, I work for cute conservatives and uh, you have a really cool purse. Can I take a picture with you <laughs> in your purse? And I was like, sure. So I take I let him take a picture with me in my purse. that's shaped like a gun. <laughs> that's and pretty cool purse. It was a cool purse. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> And, um, and this kid's like, oh my God, Alex Stein follows you. Like I went to post you on Twitter and I noticed Alex Stein follows you. How come? And I was like, oh, actually like we have a date tomorrow. Like I'm actually really excited. This will be the first time meeting him. And I think he's really cool. And, um, this kid reached out to Alex Stein to confirm whether or not we had a date and, this kid said something about how like he thought I was flirting with him, which I wasn't like I wasn't I have no desire to flirt with some random 16 year old. I don't have a desire to flirt with any kid, anyone under the age of 18. But Alex took that and fucking ran with it. Like he told a bunch of people that I was a pedophile and he spread that rumor all around CPAC. And it was pretty disgusting because I, I was trying to help right before he started spreading that rumor about me. I was trying to actively help him with stuff. Like he was complaining about uh, his mom's doctors. He says his mom's doctors killed her, even though based off everything I read that he sent me, they did everything in their power. I, they even broke hospital rules to try to help his mom like beyond. There were like um, I think they gave her ivermectin or something. And he was yes. like, oh, they weren't supposed to do that. And that's what killed her. Um, I think it was ivermectin. It could have been something no, else. No, it was a uh, Reva, Reva. Whatever. Yeah, Re Remdesivir. Yeah, it was Remdesivir, Re right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so he said. blamed the Remdesivir. And I was like, so these doctors went above and beyond to try to help your mom and you want to sue them. And I didn't think, I was like, first of all, I'm not an attorney, so I can't help you with that. Um, but like I gave him, the resources to find an attorney if you wanted to go through that process. But I also said, like, I would recommend against it for your political career because concern, but whatever. Right. Um, he also told me that he thought Glenn Beck, he had, he told me that he had proof that Glenn Beck went to Epstein Island. He didn't send me that proof. I never saw any proof that Glenn Beck went to Epstein Island, but Alex was like, Oh, Glenn Beck went to Epstein Island. I want to, uh, confront him and I want to put it on camera. Can you help me with this? And I'm like, sure. So he's like, go to Glenn Beck, uh, go talk to him, go annoy him right now and tell me where your lo like where your location is and then I'll run in. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I try to help him with that. Um, and then he never did it. He claimed that he was banned from CPAC, but I saw him later at CPAC. So he wasn't um well he's a liar but yeah continue <laughs> yeah so he wasn't banned from cpac and yeah and then right after right after that thing with glenn beck that's when he started spreading the rumor that i was a pedophile so first glenn beck he claims glenn beck is a pedophile then he claims i'm a pedophile um and so i was like what the actual fuck so i started hanging out with other people at cpac and i've been and i go go to like the influencer it's really cringe but they have at cpac and at america fest they have like influencer events sure so i always go to those and i usually have a date and um like the last two or three times i went to those events alex went to my dates and complained to my dates about me being at the event i mean like do you know that she's a pedophile and that she's in love with me and like she won't leave me alone the only reason she comes to these events is for me and it's like bro no, like, <laughs> no, nobody. I, I went one time to see Pat because you asked me to, and then you stood me up on the date, and then you called me a pedophile. But other than that, I have no desire to ever see you again. And so he is like on multiple occasions. If he sees me at CPAC, if he sees me at America Fest, he like comes up to me and starts actual fights with me. Like, I mean, that's harassment. That's like actual criminal harassment, in my opinion. 
Close, at least. Uh, you're the attorney, maybe you can. <laughs> but I mean, it's crazed behavior, however you want to describe it, right? Uh, it's unhinged behavior. I don't know if I'd call it criminal harassment, but it is like unhinged. It's creepy. It's weird, especially because like he, like a lot of the times, my dates are like good friends of mine that I've known well before Alex or people that I've like, like spend a lot of time with. Like, like I have like there's like. Okay, for instance, like Ian Crossland and um, Luke Rudkowski, these are like two very dear friends of mine that I hang out with quite a lot. Like they both spent the night at my house multiple times. Like I've spent the night at theirs, like with friends and stuff, like group parties, like we go sure. out. And for Alex to be running up to these people and complaining that I'm like, he is so unhinged. It's hard for me to wrap my head around just how weird it is so i started complaining to my friends about alex like like when this happened i think it was like a year or two ago i was telling my friends in the conservative space like what the f is wrong with this dude like why is he so weird and i got some really interesting answers like oh. so first of all i'm a jew and um us jews we kind of stick together and we <laughs> i've heard that all <laughs> <laughs> and um, a lot of us live in like the boca area and apparently that's where he's so this is what i heard i haven't seen the proof of this but i've had multiple people multiple people confirm this was true that um his dad had a car dealership and that's alex true. was like that's incapable true. of getting a job so his dad basically gave him the car dealership and then alex got married and so his dad paid for his house for him and his new wife and Alex ran a car, was a used car salesman or whatever. They um, have a very good while, reputation, by the way, used car salesman. Uh, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and while he was selling used cars, allegedly his wife would give handies to like every <laughs> single dude in the neighborhood. <laughs> he was like known for being just this massive cuck. Like if you ask him about the massage table in his garage, apparently he'll like, know exactly what the fuck you're talking about there's a ledge i haven't seen it but from what i've heard there is a circulation of pictures going around of a stained massage table from alex stein's basement from his ex-wife just no shit so allegedly again we'll put allegedly here he was pimping out his wife to sell used cars is that that's the allegation here I don't know if he was pimping her out or she was or doing it was, willingly or he was getting off or she on was it. Doing it willingly or like if he was involved, but his, he was a major cuck for a long time, allegedly. So, uh, that is the craziness I heard. And then there's, there was a few other things. Um, yeah. So my other girlfriend reached out to me and she was like, Hey, like I saw that you and Alex sign like didn't work out. And I was like, yeah. And she's like, honestly, girl, I don't know why you wanted to go on a date with him especially because of his snapchat and i was like what i don't really go on snapchat because i'm a grown-ass woman so um <laughs> what's up what's up on his snapchat and she was like oh every single morning like pretty much every morning and I, I didn't see this but pretty much every morning according to my friend who is a very reliable source who i love very much um uh, he has this like really young teenage girl and he takes her to ihop and he takes like pieces of sausage and tries to shove it in her face and goes, ha ha, I'm shoving sausage in your face. I'm shoving sausage in your face. And keep in mind, how old is this man? Uh, 30, maybe something around there. Something 30, 32. No, he's he's older. older than that. Uh, he's let me older. And he's shoving up, sausage actually. in the mouth of 19 year old girls on Snapchat. Just, and he has the audacity to call it. 37 he's 37 wow he's he's 37 yeah, he's, years old so he's a third he's almost 40. he is hooking up with 19 year olds and he has the audacity to call me and glenn beck a pedophile and the craziest thing is like he did not have a job he did, was not doing anything he asked me to help sabotage glenn beck he never sabotaged glenn beck which is weird because we all know how much he loves to cause a scene and then all of a sudden he's working for glenn beck is there a little bit of blackmail going on there? Like, I just, I don't know, but I would think so. I can't think of any other reason why Alex got a job at the Blaze if he was gung-ho on proving that Glenn Beck went to Epstein Island. 
Well, there's a lot of questions there, and I, you know, I was cool with him for a while, and he's been on the show many times. And before he got on the Blaze, he was coming on the show a lot. And um, I have a famous incident at Blaze Studios where I went there and did a little uh, live streaming, and they wouldn't let me in for a scheduled appearance and all this stuff. Anyway, I won't go into all that. Um, but he was trying to get a job with the Blaze at the time, and he hated Elijah Schaefer, but he wouldn't say so in public. And at the time, I had a beef with Elijah Schaefer, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, yeah, Elijah so, Schaefer is no bueno either, unfortunately. Yeah, look, I, I won't go there. We squashed our beef. But, uh, you know, so I had a I beef don't... with – you can say whatever you want. I'm just saying I, I squashed the beef with him. But – uh, so he wouldn't say anything to Elijah Schaefer. Um, he was talking to Sidney Watson at the time, and Sidney Watson's like, yeah, they'll let you in, they'll let you in. Well, when I got there, uh, well, five minutes before I got there, he called me and said, they're not going to let you in, but go ahead and do it anyway, basically. Do your thing anyway. And so I did, and it's kind of well known in my corners of the Internet, uh, that stream and uh, what I said to Schaefer and all this stuff. And um, anyway, that that happened. But what he ended up doing was engineering uh, Elijah's downfall, basically, and got Just his channel. Just so he channel. could get the channel. Yeah, he got so his he channel. Could get the channel, yes. which he ran into the ground. Does anyone fucking watch that show? Like, I would. What are the stats from before and after? Because I used oh, to watch like. You were, what yeah. is it? You are still here or you were here? What was the yeah, show they had before? Uh, you, there was You Are Here. They're slightly offensive. Yeah. Those are two different shows. Or, yeah, We Are Here. Uh, I think one was with Sydney Watson. One was the one with Watson, Watson. They actually that was actually a good show. They just hated each other, but that made it even they better. Hate, <laughs> but they hated each other for good reason. Yeah. I didn't like Sydney Watson because she's not super conservative, and I don't think she has the best takes always. But she seems like a relatively nice girl with decent morals. And I have heard some from very reputable sources. I have heard some crazy shit about Elijah Schaefer. Maybe you guys are on good terms, but if I were a female, I wouldn't get into an elevator alone with him. If you know what I'm saying. Yeah, we're we we. I'll leave that there. Uh, I've again heard things, you know. But look, I squashed the beef with him, so I'm trying not to. <laughs> <laughs> just try to get back up again. Uh, but yeah, that's fine. You can, you can say whatever you want uh, there. But yeah, I, I know there there's things swirling around and, and all that stuff. But um, but yeah, he yeah. basically engineered Elijah's downfall and took over his channel. I, I didn't even realize this until yesterday. That's Elijah's original channel that they just oh, took yeah. over and gave to him. Uh, and and the stats the went, yeah. the stats have gone not, like plummeted because he just doesn't have anything new like the what was interesting about him originally was like his pimp on a blimp he was coming up with funny rhyme schemes that was talking about you know the conservative issue he was actually pretty decent at you know rhyming he's like a fairly easy on the eyes guy at least on camera and in person he looks janked but um <sighs> but he, he would like wear the funny outfits and you don't usually see like big funny like big guys doing that sort of stuff yeah. am i like glitching i feel like i'm a, glitching a little bit just a little bit okay whatever i don't it's, it looks fine it's fine now. okay it's fine now okay um but after that he didn't really go anywhere especially because the whole rise to fame thing was like talking to school boards and public officials during covid when those were basically the only meetings happening and now that covid's over he doesn't really have anything new to say so he keeps trying to one up himself with like the racist jokes and this that and the other and he's just making a scene out of everything like I, okay like i have a couple of friends who are content creators and I, I'm not going to say their names. I, I told you privately who it was. You did. Um, but there was a situation where, like, the top content creator in the group, um, he hired, like, a yacht for him and a couple of friends to go out and just, like, chill and have a good time, yada, yada. Alex, I don't, they don't know how he got the location, but Alex just showed up with, like, a posse. and. It was, and like dressed super inappropriately and being super loud. And it's a huge reason why those content creators no longer work together because Alex basically blamed one of the content creators for giving the location of where the yacht was going to be. And it, it just caused a huge fight because Alex shows up 
unannounced, uninvited, just to cause a scene because that's all he has. He doesn't have any content create. He doesn't have any original ideas. He doesn't have any, like, uh, I would watch Slightly Offensive to learn new things about what's happening, to, right. like, see what's happening in culture, to see what, to, like, that's how I would get some of my news and also some of, like, the commentary with the news. Alex can't do that. He doesn't have the research skills. He doesn't have the intellect. All he has is racist jokes and feeding bananas to black men. Like, that's all he has. So, and sticking sausages in 19-year-old girls' mouths. That's all he's good for. So, that's why the show is gone. What's well, terrible, Lauren? I, we watched it, and I've seen a little bit of it before. And it's every time I tune in, it's complete trash. But last night, we watched it and sniped it and took over his Rumble chat. Uh, since he wants to lie about me, I figured I'd tell the truth about him, like I said at the start. Uh, and so, uh, we watched the hour long program and it was legitimately and i don't say this just because we have the beef going now and we'll have it going forever now after what he said but it was legitimately the worst hour of streaming i've seen this entire year and one of the worst hours of streaming i've seen ever and i've been doing this for 10 years uh for a living right uh it's just boring it's boring. He had on some weirdo guest, and it wasn't even the good kind of weirdo, right? You know, that's funny. Uh, it was just like some guy, like bum off the street. Um, then he brought in another bum off the street, and he's he broke his computer at the end of the show because we were taking over his chat. I don't know if that had anything to do with it. He was bitching out at his, at his mods, losing control, and just oh, that's so cringe. It was it was bitching cringe. at your mods is the lowest of low. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and he just. I don't know. It just wasn't funny at all, and just painfully unfunny. Like hard to watch, and I, I I don't know how he can even stay at the blaze much longer. I don't I don't see a show lasting longer than a year because it's objectively terrible. It is. I mean, like I don't wish poorly for him. I well, wish I, do. I wish the best for him, but I just think that he would do significantly better if he. Like, I think he could be, like, you know Fleck us. I don't personally know. Like, but know of him. Like, know of his I've content. heard the name. Yeah, I, I know, vaguely. I just don't want to. He, he covers, like, cultural events, and he does stuff like that. Like, he could – I think Alex could do that. But if he would have to put in some effort to look for articles, to, like, look for things to talk about, he doesn't have anything to talk about. So he just – I don't know. Like it, it's just the most boring thing ever. Just watching some dude spaz out is not funny. It's not creative. And the thing is, he was funny and creative for like ten minutes, and that's what got him famous. And then after he got famous, it was all about creating the scenes. Like you look at the AOC thing; it's it's not about being funny. Like calling her a big booty Latina. Okay, maybe some people find it funny, but it's m not so much about, like, if you were just to call a random Latina girl on the street a big booty Latina, nobody would flinch. But you're yelling that at a congresswoman. It's all about creating the scene. It's all, yes. and that's, I think he actually is now banned from both CPAC and um, America First, which is crazy because they want as many people as possible to come. They would probably love Alex to come, but he is now banned because he is all he does is create scenes. All he does is fight with people. Like he fights with me. I have like a thousand followers. Why? What possible, like, what are you doing? It's not going to create any clout or drive for you. He just, he just causes a scene because that's all he knows how to do. Yeah, and it's just gotten old. It's the same old bit uh, over and over and over again, and it, it's gotten stale. And, you know, I'm here in Mexico. There, there are plenty of big, big booty Latinas, so to speak, uh, going around. I wouldn't call one of them that. Uh, I live in a safe part of Mexico, uh, in Merida, in the Yucatan, the safest part, actually, but I still wouldn't do that. Uh, might not go over too well. Uh, but, uh, you know, that was, you know, he's living off that. That was two years ago. Right, like that was. I think it was two years ago, right? Uh, almost at least. Uh, yeah. And, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, just so many places are begging for content creators. They are like begging for like even the most basic of content creators to 
come to their events to to promote their shit to get eyes on them and nobody wants alex at their events that is so telling that is they pay for me to go like with no followers and they're like oh but she makes conservative content we would love to have you here here's your free ticket for the like exclusive section and i go i go frequently because we like if you make any sort of content they will want you to come and they are actively excluding alex like like security guards have pictures of him he is not allowed in the building which is it's insane you do you know how much conflict and strife you have to cause internally for conservatives in order to do that i just don't know why he doesn't go to democrat events like annoy the fucking democrats you're supposed to be a conservative why you are know, you annoying all the fucking all of us i was gonna say there's a there's a theory out there uh that he you know stephen colbert uh and maybe you know the show he used to host the colbert rapport uh over on comedy central and he played a fake conservative basically and his goal was to he's liberal his goal was to make conservatives look ridiculous and the show was very funny i used to watch it uh every night after the daily show and uh you know he's not as funny now unfortunately but uh <laughs> he kind of fell off that was the height of his career in my opinion in terms of uh, entertainment value but uh, there's a theory out there that Alex Stein is basically pulling a Colbert. Uh, and that he's actually a liberal pretending yeah, to be conservative. And to make That's conservatives That's the look most bad. sense yes. I've ever heard. Because I can't, all he fucking does is try to expose conservatives. Like he fights you, he yeah. fights me, yes. he was fighting Glenn Beck, he's fighting uh, my friends who are conservative content creators. They all, they all hate him. They all hate him. Like none of them can stand it. He's not even welcome on any of their shows anymore. And he would be a somewhat interesting guest if he just kept doing the funny raps and like making fun of like the trans agenda. And wh what people really liked about him was the fact that he was pointing out the ridiculousness of the trans agenda in schools, like having, you know, People identify as women at a whim and then a semester joined, 33 uh, cent one dollar sports competitions as men dressed like violence. women. And that, that was creative. It was funny. It was topical. It was what people wanted to hear. And then it just stopped. So, no, that that is the most. But it is weird because I thought that was really conservative and brought a good point. So. I can't imagine that he's actually a liberal. I just think that he's a very I'm just low saying that's IQ a theory. Out there. Well, liberal. yeah, he might be low IQ. That's true. But I'm just saying that's a theory that's out there because he clearly doesn't believe most of the things he say, says if you listen to him talk, right? Like, it's, it's, it's an act. Right. Like, if you're so worried about men's men in women's lockers rooms or men being, like, pedophilic towards kids, like, young girls – why are you dressing in women's bikinis and women's swimsuits in, right in and front lingerie, of In lingerie, did you see the picture? Oh, that, in, yeah. He's in, in lingerie, lingerie on his show. And then what about that picture? Yeah, with his, basically his dick in front of a four-year-old there in the pool. I mean, to me, uh, he wants to talk about Nick Ricada's kids being scarred and all this and that. Uh, how traumatized would that four-year-old, she didn't look too happy about it. She looked traumatized by a grown man standing there with a, with his dick in, in her face. Uh, you know, I, I don't think, yeah. I, I don't think that was good for her mental health. Let's just put it that way. Uh, she looked appalled. I don't either. Um, I mean, hopefully there wasn't, you know, much to see. There probably wasn't, but still. Didn't appear to be, but, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, now yeah. going back to, uh, do you know why he got divorced from his first wife? Was she, would, did she stop doing the handies or, 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 and he didn't like that or, you know, she wasn't uh, cucking him hard enough or, or or what happened there do you know any like inside details about just why they broke up he doesn't talk about his his ex-wife really as far as i know i have no details on the divorce on why they got divorced on any of that i think he is embarrassed that he was cucked like i think it is embarrassing for him that his wife was fucking pretty much every guy in the neighborhood allegedly um Like, I think, I think what she was supposed, it was a massage table. So I think it was supposed to be like a private masseuse who would give handies type situation. Um, but I think, I don't know if that was the cause of their divorce. I don't know. If, if I had a guess, if I was a guessing woman, I would bet she left him.
Yeah. Not if, the other way. If I was a betting man, I'd probably bet that too. Um, but the, the, the cocktails, it's, it's amazing because, you know, he's trying to go at Nick Ricada over allegations with swirling around him and all that stuff. Of course, we've been covering all that. Uh, and I'm supposed to get the first solo interview with him. We'll see. Innocent until the, proven guilty. Of course. Innocent did, until proven guilty. All allegations, and I don't trust the police. And, you know, I'm big on that. I think you're going to be a defense attorney, right? I usually get along pretty well with the defense attorneys. Uh, so, so yeah, these are all allegations. But, you know, he's been going hard on Nick Ricada, and the speculation is he's doing that at, at the Blazes' behest uh, because Nick Ricada was calling out Eric July, who's involved, works for the Blaze, and and has this comic and this and that and he won't let dig masterson on his show who also has been criticizing eric july and so there's some speculation that's why he's going so hard on nick ricada i really don't know why but uh you know he's calling him a, a crackhead and saying all this stuff and saying talking about his kids and calling him a cuck when you know he's allegedly he's a cuck, a cuck. yeah that's what i'm saying he is a cuck he's like the he's the biggest cuck i've ever heard of it's like like that little Jewish community has definitely been talking about what a big cuck Alex Stein is. Like, how dare he? And also, how is Nick a cuck if he's the one with the allegedly with the girlfriend? Right? Does does Alex not know what the word cuck means? Like, is he I just think he's mentally slow. I just feel like he was dropped on his head as a child. Like, I just don't think he's an intelligent guy. Well, no, I've never heard of anything high IQ or even semi high IQ come out of his mouth. Uh, and I haven't heard anything funny come out of his mouth in about a year and a half either. So that's the other problem. Uh, and like you said, you have to be a real nuisance. You know, there's some stories about some people, and you mentioned some stuff earlier. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, you know, there's stories about people uh, swirling around, and they're not banned from these shows. They're not banned no. from these events. Uh, but he is. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. that, that shows just like what a fucking cancer he actually is. Like you have to really work hard to, to be this blackballed. Oh, you know what I mean? Uh, especially at They're his level begging. of fame, right? They're begging content creators to go to these content creator events. And like a lot of the big ones don't even want to be there. Like, because, you know, they, they already have their own shit going on, but, um, some of them get paid to go there and like a lot of them show up and, um, whatever and, it, and that's how they get them to go to cpac and they get them to go to america fest by like i don't know having these like parties and sure, like banquets sure. and all of that shit and they are begging people to go so that they could promote their agenda to the content creators to get them to post certain types of content and then also to uh make america fest look like oh look you can you might be able to get to meet um i don't know lauren chen or you might get to meet uh Ian Crossland or sure. uh, Tim Pool or it's a like, draw to get to people to buy people. tickets. It's like wrestling, right? Like it's like yeah, yes. That's yeah, it. and they they even have um, who's the guy with the horns? They they have the, the uh, shaman. QAnon shaman, yeah. They have QAnon shaman. They have literally every level. Of, they have me. They have like every level of content creator. They're begging content creators to come, but Alex Stein, he's banned from both events. I've never heard of such a thing. I have never ever heard of such a thing you have to be fucking up constantly you have to be pissing he only pisses off people who want to help his career i don't get it like what like for instance the issue with me why would you go around calling me a pedophile what the fuck did i ever do to you other than tr like before before alex and i started fighting I was so nice to him. I would like listen to him bitch and cry. Like, honestly, if I lost my mom, I'd be bitching and crying too. But I would listen to him and I tell him like, oh, everything's okay. And I would console him and I try to make him feel better. I was nothing but nice to this man for a prolonged period of time. And he goes around and calls me a fucking pedophile. Like, why? Why does he hate everyone he must hate himself honestly that that has to be what it is i just it would he had like made me cry i was when this first happened i was really distraught i was very very sad i because i thought you know oh my god he's like this big time content creator he's gonna like ruin me he's going to uh he, like i'm so embarrassed i was so excited to meet him not only did i get stood up on a date but i'm also being called a pedophile within my own community um i was mortified i cried for like several days i was very very upset and for what like what the fuck 
did I ever do to you other than treat you with the most amount of kindness that like that I'm able to I I don't know I don't know why you would do that to another person it 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 actually still upsets me when I think about it um yeah well, I don't that, I'm sorry you. No, it's okay. Um, I, I, it would have upset me as well. Uh, and he's this guy with all these followers and every, you know, everybody knows him and he's out there calling you a pedophile and for no reason, like what the fuck? Uh, Not yet. And then coming up to me at, like, at different events yeah. and creating even more of a scene. And I just, it's actually like wild. It's wild. I've never seen anyone do anything like that ever. Now you and I've worked. Oh, go ahead. Finish your thought. No, finish your thought. And I, I've worked with like a, a lot of content creators. A lot of them burn bridges. I know I've burnt my. I burned a few bridges. here and there. Yeah. <laughs> we all burn bridges every once in a while. It happens. It's part of like being part of a little bit of the drama sphere, a little sure. bit of politics. You're gonna end up burning bridges. It's not what you should be doing. It's what you should be actively avoiding. But it happens. He has burnt every bridge he has ever made. I don't know. There's very few people like I'm friends with Lila Hart. She's the nicest girl ever. No one dislikes Lila because she's just a sweet. Yeah, and you know what? I used to talk shit about her when we had our first feud. Uh, Why? And then he he, well, because it was like you know an easy target, right? Uh, and she was his his number two or whatever. But you know what? I started talking to her, and she she's was so, so nice. She was so nice. And she was talking about her sobriety and she would never fire back on me and she was so nice and i started talking to her and even last night when, when we were watching the show i said you know what i have nothing bad to say about her you know people were talking about her in the chat and stuff and you know i was like i don't have anything bad to say about her uh because she actually is really sweet and really nice uh so i i'm not gonna join in, in on that uh but at one point i did but i started talking to her and she was just the nicest person and uh you know was encouraging me to to get sober and on my journey and all this stuff. And so I really have nothing bad to say about her at all. And um, it's a shame that she's associated with Alex Stein. Uh, I guess that would be one thing, but. Uh, but that's his last friendship, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. For and, the, and the reason I think it is, is because Lila doesn't fight with anyone. She's friends with everyone. Yeah. She's a nice girl. She has a happy marriage. So there's no like relationship drama. There's like, so there's really well, even when wrong. i tried to fight with her she wouldn't right like she 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 just doesn't do that yeah she's just she nice. just doesn't fight and yeah. that's i genuinely believe alex got blessed by god to have her in his life because if he didn't have her he would have nobody he would have nobody i there like wh who would deal with him well you I know, know i was wondering just like his guest list is pretty shabby right uh and he's on the blaze on a big platform and he's in their studios you know if i had that type of power right my own studio at the blaze I, I, no telling i get good guess anyway right <laughs> broadcasting from mexico with a fucking green screen uh behind me and i look at who he's bringing in he's literally dragging in bums off the street uh and and i, I guess that's because of his torture rela relationships right he just can't get anybody anymore yeah no i mean um he invited i forget who it was I've, he invited one of my friends to come on his show and the desperation in that man, like, like he invited my friend. He's like, and my friend said, yes. And he's like, please don't bail. Please don't bail last second. I need you to actually come. Please actually come. And there's like this, like his, I think his guests are frequently like booking and then bailing. And I, it it's just happened to him the other night. Vic Mignogna was going to come on and then he bailed at the last minute. Now he tried yeah, to say it's because of Ricada, but I don't know that I believe that. No, I think a lot of his guests have done that repetitively and frequently based off the messages I saw that he was sending my friends like, please come on my show, please come on my show, please, please, please. And then when they, if they'd ever said yes, they, he'd be like, please don't bail, I'll do anything, I'll pay for you to come, I'll blah, 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 blah. And a lot of them just still don't want to go because he's just cringe, he's bad for their careers. If anything, he hurts the guests that come on. And so people want, First of all, very few people watch his show. The only people probably watching his show are the m people he's inviting just to check out to see if it's a good show. And then they watch for 10 minutes and go, no, nah, you know, 
I don't think so. I well, don't think so. And he's also, so I have a policy of not ambushing uh, guests on the show with their enemies and stuff like that. And I've seen him do that several times as well. And the reason I don't do that, it, it is entertaining, right? Uh, and people like seeing the run-ins, to use a wrestling term. Uh, but it's unfair to the guest, right, to, to just throw one of their enemies uh, in there without telling them and to ambush them like that. And I've seen him do that two or three times. That's another way to lose yeah, a, to lose people coming on your show you're right? not going to get future guests if you're constantly yes. ambushing your guests right i don't know why i have had um that's part of like so my show used to not really be politics it used to be more um interviews and i still do a lot of interviews i'm actually working on getting um i don't know if you saw that viral video of that girl making cupcakes and then crying and then the boy and then the ex-husband was like Oh, don't cry for her because she actually doesn't have custody of her kids. Have you seen that? I saw that, yeah. So I've been talking to both the ex-husband and the cupcake girl, trying to get both of them to come come on my show at once or at separate times. But both of them are aware that I'm talking to the other person. Because right. like that's how you appropriately do things. It it may maybe they will be less likely to come on, but I'd rather have them not come on then expose myself for being a bad person like expose and expose my guests to trauma and to get you know rage quitting and I, that's not a positive look total gut so, victory sent one dollar right, i'll let this uh stephen bunnell the second i'll let this is in the play i can't stop the lauren. tts for some reason nick is I on the market OBS, now. So, maybe lauren can um, swing with him and become the new april on a hole now i'll i'll um he mentioned now, Nick is a friend of mine. Yes. So it is really hurting my heart to see what he's going through. I don't know why he's going through it. I'm also not allowed to say much about him because technically I work I work under his attorney. Mark Randaza is has represented him. I work yes. for yes. Mark Randaza. Okay. Uh quite frequently. I th I've worked on Nick Rakeda cases before, I'm pretty sure. So I do have like some attorney client confidentiality issues. Right. Um, so I can't really talk about the Nick Ricada stuff other than like innocent until proven guilty. I don't represent Nick. I, I'm not his attorney. I don't want to give off that impression either. Yeah, I'm but not... just legal ethics. I, I know what you mean since you've worked yeah. on the case. Yeah, but, um, um, but no, I'm not trying to hook up with my client. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's usually against legal ethics as well. <laughs> that is also well, actually. I think it's allowed attorneys, technically, but it's frowned upon, though, right? Uh, no. So if they're currently your client, you're not allowed to hook up with them. And I think every state has different rules, but yeah. there's like a waiting period. So if you want to hook up with one of your clients, I think you have to wait a year in most states. It could be like three years in other states. I'm not sure. Right. Not sure. I knew there was some kind of regulations there as far as that's concerned. Yeah. Apparently, Casey Anthony, um, she paid for her attorney by just fucking him, though, like throughout the trial. No shit. I never heard that. Yeah. Yeah. I could see how that might be a fair trade, though, uh, for, the <laughs> for the attorney. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Uh, and uh, it's not like she had money it, and she it, got a top notch attorney. Yeah. And he worked really hard. And she got off. So <laughs> I guess she wasn't the only one really getting hard. off, uh, if you know what I mean there. Uh, now, uh, He's like, I'll get you off if you get me off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, things are starting to make a little more sense uh, in that situation there. I forget that attorney's name, but he was uh, really good. He uh, was actually. he was really good at getting the jury to not look at the issue. Like he threw yeah. he just threw things in the wind. Like um, he I think he was the one who brought up the pool, and then he switched it to the car, and then he talked about how her dad allegedly uh, essayed. Oh, that's not Sorry about that. Boss. That's okay. Hugo Boss. That's okay. Anyway, uh, how her dad allegedly essayed her. And, and all of that, the confusion of all of the facts is what got in the jury's head. But honestly, that was such a long shot. That is such a long shot. Well, like, everybody really thought she was going down for it. And that was one of the shock verdicts of my lifetime. OJ being another one, obviously. But um, you're I mean, OJ, me. though, OJ was during an interesting time because it was right after the Rodney King yes. um, uh, and the Reginald protest. Denny, Reginald so Denny there was like that. Well. Yes, yeah, racial tension. Yeah, so there was that race element to it. And so the jury felt 
uh, impacted by that racial element. And then there was like a lot of distrust for the cops. So like it was the cops versus black men. And so that's why the jury had like a difficult issue where it was, it was more about no, it was like nullifying the jury. So basically the jury was like, yeah, he's guilty, but we don't want to see another black man in jail. Therefore we're going to say that he's not guilty. What did Casey Anthony have? Casey Anthony was just like, (laughs) <laughs> Which jury nullification is allowed, by the child. way. We talked about we, t- we talk about that sometimes on the kill stream. Jur- jury nullification is legal, uh, yeah. and uh, perfectly. You're not allowed. allowed to mention it as an attorney. Right. You're not allowed you to like in it. closing arguments. You can't be like, "Hey, jury, by the way, <laughs> have yeah, you heard of jury you nullification?" But it is allowed. The Supreme Court's ruled on it. Uh, it it's a, it's a thing. But they just don't let you. T- they just don't let them uh, tell you about it, right? Uh, well, more people reason, should be aware of it, though. I, I feel like. But go ahead. The reason that it's like allowed, I don't, I don't, I didn't read the Supreme Court case, but based on, if there is one. But the my understanding is you're not allowed to look into the minds of the jury. The jury room is supposed to be a black box. There's no recording of the jury room. You're not allowed to know what the jurors discussed. Um, that's all up to 100% up to the jury to do as they will. So if they, so you're not, so even if they did nullify, you're not allowed to know that you're not, you just have to take the, what's given to you by the jury. And um, another reason for that is if the whole purpose of having the jury is so that the state action of imprisoning someone or taking away someone's life, because, you know, death penalty is still a thing. Uh, that's still, the people still have some say in that. So if the government is getting out of hand, you want the people to have some say in everything that's going on in, in like governmental procedures. And so that's part of the, if the government gets out of hand, jury nullification would combat that. Like if everybody is getting arrested, eventually the jurors are, I don't want to get arrested. Okay, let's just nullify this. Um, so it's just like one, it's one of those many checks and balances in the American judicial and legal system. It's just unfortunate that most people don't know about it. Uh, and, uh, there's a reason they don't want you to know about it, but we've had this discussion with another attorney guest of mine. He goes by legal man. And we always talk about jury nullification, uh, whenever he comes on the show. Uh, and so anytime I get a chance to talk about it, I, I put a smile across my face because more people need to know, uh, that they don't actually have to pay attention. They can just override the law. Uh, it's to the jury uh they don't they can yeah. just say this is an unfair law this is an unfair trial or i just don't want to convict them uh for any reason whatsoever uh and that's perfectly perfectly legal according to the supreme court now they and put a bunch of rules goes, around it uh you can't it's tell someone them goes it. opposite way too like if you look at the trump trial yeah a jury could just go in and say ah, i didn't really pay attention but i don't like the guy yep like what's gonna stop them Nothing. so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, now back to Alex Stein. I, I did enjoy that conversation though. And I know a lot about the OJ trial. You're younger than me, uh, but I watched it live as a kid. Probably shouldn't be watching the OJ trial as a 10 year old. Really? Yes. I was watching the you're, OJ trial. Yes. Yes. You look younger than you are then. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yes. Uh, I'm Alex Stein's age, a uh, one year older actually. So thank you. Are right, you going to make me blush? But uh, I appreciate that compliment. Um, but yeah, I know a lot about the OJ trial. So I was glad to talk about that a little bit, but w- back to Stein though. Uh, you mentioned his mother's death. My mother passed away, uh, mm-hmm. unfortunately, and was in the hospital for, for months. And, uh, she had had a fall in the hospital. She went for a minor, uh, issue, had a fall in the hospital, brain hemorrhage. They did brain surgery. They thought she was going to recover, but she ended up having long story. Didn't happen, but it was like three months of, you know, bedside visits and stuff like that. And unfortunately, long story, I didn't get to be there when she died because they put her in hospice care and there was a 10 day waiting period because of COVID before you could visit anybody in hospice care. And she actually died on the 10th day before I could go visit her. So, you know, and I have pictures of her, you know, in the hospital bed and videos, you know, that I took for my own just to have. Um, but I know that my mother would never want anybody to see her like that. Uh, she would never want anybody to yeah. remember her in that way. Um, I know that for a fact. She, she didn't tell me that. She, did, she, would, would, she wouldn't have to tell me that, right? My mom's the same way. She yes. would, she'd be mortified by that. So what do you think? And again, Stein lost his mom. 
that sucks. I know how bad that sucks. Uh, and as much as I despise that piece of shit, uh, you know, I can sympathize with that. But what I can sympathize with is the way he monetized that and put her worst moments, her dying breaths on, on air, on YouTube, and grifted off that. I mean, is that not psychotic behavior and just disrespectful to your mother? Completely, completely psychotic. Like, Blasting her on the internet, blasting the very, the only people trying to fight for your mom, like doing everything they can to fight for your mom. You're trashing them on the, the only people who are working to save your mom, you're trashing them. You're trying to take away their medical licenses. You're trying to sue them. And you're embarrassing your mom in the process in front of tens of thousands of people well, maybe it's alex stein he doesn't get many viewers in front of hundreds of people that's like it's horrible it's really embarrassing it's sad i i mean there's a reason that his family is currently not involved in any of his streaming life or in his life really um so i i think they're they are embarrassed by the way that he acted prior to that but that was kind of the beginning of his career yeah so, it was that's kind of what helps it was like Propel. the second bump after the bathing suit and talking the rap the pimp on a blend and the rap. city council stuff but all that was after he used that to springboard his career and it was during the covid in my opinion covid bullshit uh that was going on uh but there was a a lot of momentum behind uh oh the doctors didn't do this or they didn't do that or they didn't do, do the right treatment and you could really get a lot of uh, attention uh, that way, right? Uh, the doctors killed my mom or whatever, and da 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 da. And I don't believe that story for a second. Uh, and we talked about it earlier, but he used that to to grift off the anti-vaccine people. The anti, and for the record, I never took the vaccine, yeah, either. Um, but he used that to to propel himself um, amongst that crowd in my opinion, and he did it in the worst way that I, I could never imagine. And I have photos and videos like that of my mother. I could never imagine putting that. I, I would rather put a gun in my mouth and blow my brains out than put but that But I think that out. goes, yeah, sorry. I think that goes back to like the burning bridges thing. He doesn't have any respect for any, like literally anyone, people who are trying to help him, people who are kind to him, people who love him and care about him. He's still hurts them. He still is actively vicious towards them. I, that, does he have any pictures with him and his mom hanging out? Does he have any pictures with him doing something fun with his mom in his adulthood? Or is the only time he ever spent time with his mom during an advantageous time for him when she's dying and he can use her death as a springboard for his career? I haven't seen any of the oh, this is us at the park. This is us at whatever. I haven't seen any of that. Well, right. When my mom died, I put out a picture of us at Graceland. I'm from Memphis uh, originally. Exactly. So. Like if my dad died or if my mom, like if my, I think of my dad just because like my dad and I have done, you know, like we've gone to Africa together. We've done uh, cross country road trips together. We've gone up the state of California. To, like we have so many pictures of us doing fun stuff together. Um, <laughs> pictures with my mom like at the beach and gardening and all of that sort of stuff sent one dollars on Ryan. um the doctors killed steinberg's mom i would post so one of those pictures if if i posted one of my parents on their deathbed my other parent would probably disown me I like if i posted my mom on her deathbed i don't think my dad would ever talk to me again or if i posted my dad on my on his deathbed my mom would be just you know, be, besides herself, she would be so upset. She would be like, what do you, like, we loved you your entire life. Why are you actively trying to hurt us, especially in death, especially when we can't even fight for ourselves anymore or speak anymore. And I think it's so ironic that he waited for his mom to die before he started attacking the doctors. Like he, she was already in the treatment process. If you had issues with her treatment, why didn't you say anything during the treatment? Unless he was completely not involved in his mom's life at all. Didn't even know what her treatment was until after she died. I think it's, I don't know. It, it's pretty much the most, one of the most disgusting. No, I think it's the most disgusting thing I've seen a content creator do for clout. I think so too.
yeah. and he doesn't like it when you bring it up. Uh, but, uh, you know, I put out that video. I took his video from YouTube and put it on my Twitter yesterday because I feel like a lot of people don't know about this. Uh, and he did de deleted the tweet, but he didn't delete the video. Uh, so I put out the tweet as well where he's, you know, showing his mom on a deathbed. He's got a whole video and he's, he's to me, he's acting, uh, honestly, uh, in this. Uh, and, and, you know, he's putting on this whole show and mom, no. Uh, now, of course, it's tough to lose your mother. Uh, but he's holding a selfie stick, you know, while he's filming this. Like, I can't imagine anything more crass. Over his mother's deathbed, he's holding a selfie stick uh, and making sure to just get get the right angle. And how many takes does it does he have there, right? We don't know the answer to that. Oh, my God. Uh, I would love to see the deleted footage. It'd be well, like, you, know there, you know there were multiple takes. Like, there had to be. He'd be like, hey, I'm Alex. Uh, my mom is dying. Hey, Mom, can you cough? after that line next time okay take two hey i'm alex my mom's dying <laughs> uh you know like i i'm sure that happened i mean probably i'd love to see the you know what if you guys ever get in a legal dispute maybe you could subpoena those records because that would be fucking hysterical it's just love to see that unreal i mean and he likes to talk about people's families and this and that and look you know i've went dirty myself on occasion for sure uh but he's the one who started up this alley with me first uh and you know okay you want to strike it up uh well I, I can't think of anything more exploitative uh than what he did uh and i see a smaster 33 um, cent one dollars i'll I just let that steinberg he's, alex he's probably killed his mom his... for clout now I, I i don't believe that he, that he did that ass master uh, with the super chat. Um, but he definitely used her for clout and just in her worst moments. I, I don't know. I really, uh, we said all we could say about it. It's just, it's in, it's insane. Just levels of clout hounding. I, I can't even, uh, imagine doing something like that. Uh, and so now you said he's estranged. My family for, would murder me. Yeah. I was going to say, and then if you dude, the rest of your family who's still around, I, I would have been disowned for sure. Uh, and I see a, a, another super a chat coming wolf in. sent one dollars on Rumble. We already the hit Ralph our goal. Amali so, curse, but... curse. The mega powers collide to fuck <laughs> Alex into the dirt. Get Benji loser. Get we know the... you're watching. Yeah, we know. We're... Yeah, He's I saw some pretty. The Horde de Laguna, I think, is possibly Alex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's been sending some of his uh, his goons here in the chat because he didn't he didn't want this to happen, obviously. And you know, I talked to you originally, and uh, you know, I was gonna have you in a debate, maybe uh, something like that, right? And then I found out you had this beef with Stein, and you knew a lot about him. And I said, well, let's just let's just do that because uh, he's been talking a lot of shit about me, my relationship with my son, uh, bringing that oh up. And why would you even do that though? Like, why would? First of all, how is your son a content creator? No, he's three years old. Then why the fuck are you bringing him up? Like, what if if you if it's not a content creator? actively putting themselves out there, then leave their name out of your mouth. What the, what in God's green planet is wrong with you? I, how can you attack a child? I mean, I guess if you're willing to attack your own dead, dead moms, like yeah. only people who loved her, then, and helped her through the, you know, horrible process of death. The only people who were actually by her side and not with a selfie stick. Like if you're willing to attack the doctors and your own dead mother, I guess you'd be willing to attack some other guy's children, but that's, that's so disgusting. And this is why he has no views. This is why people don't watch him is because he doesn't have anything interesting to say. He, all he does is attack children and, and act gross. Like that's not, that is not even conservative. The only reason conservatives thought your content was funny in the first place with the whole pimp on the blimp stuff is because you are so gross and acting like a liberal. But now that you claim to be a conservative, stop acting so disgusting. Like, what the actual? Am I? You I feel like I'm on crazy pills when I think about him. Yeah, don't worry about the language. We're on Rumble, so you can say, you can say whatever. I do see. Fuck shit. Yeah, fuck shit. Ass. Yeah, she can say all that. <laughs> I do see somebody requesting to call in. No, I don't know uh if this is a, a troll or, or not uh it says no nah, i'm not gonna let them in actually i don't mind trolls i don't i nah, have pretty thick skin it says uh team so and so and it's a content creator i don't like so uh, i'm not gonna let them <laughs> in so it's probably somebody trying to troll me so they can get fucked. uh now red pill gang sent five dollars on rumble 
Does Lauren know what Carlot Stein's ex is working these days? I'm in the market for a hand job. Uh, Do you know that, that man getting remarried? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Maybe if he gets remarried, you'll be able to get another hand job. Until then. <laughs> yeah. But you have no information on on what lot she might be working at these days. Um, uh, no inside information. Unfortunately, there. no. I'm so sorry. Somewhere near Boca in Florida. From my understanding, somewhere near Boca in Florida. Mm -hmm. Oh man. I, I, here goes a, here goes another super chat. Lit uh, bit sent three dollars. Lauren, can you give us the female uh, opinion yeah. on Alex's choice well, of women's okay. clothes and swimwear so he one wears? Thing, when I used to think he was attractive. Oh, wait, on, wait, one sec, one sec, one sec, one sec, one sec. A smaster thirty three sent one dollars on Rumble. Wait. Lauren, say the Lauren, n word, please. No, say the n word, please. No. Please. Chat demands it. She won't. Do, no. She won't do that. No. She's no, a lawyer. What the fuck? That would ruin her career. Anyway. <laughs> Um, now, little bit says, Lauren, can you give us the female opinion on Alex's choice of women on, on women's clothes and swimwear? He yeah. Wears? So back when I used to think Alex was like relatively attractive, I don't know if it was because I hadn't seen his full body, but he's like chunky. And so part of the reason he's wearing, like if he was wearing, and he's um, gotten fatter, like I lost a hundred pounds. I used to be quite fat so i lost 100 pounds i'm down from 275 to 175. this guy for every pound i've lost he's gained like he's gotten really fat over the last couple years since he blew up he just keeps eating and up. eating and eating he's he's literally a, bl a blimp now uh not a <laughs> pimp he's just the blimp am i lying like look at him <laughs> he is a blimp and no pimp would even want to ride on him um no he's he's gross uh, when I met him in person, he was also way grosser in person than like on camera. He looks relatively okay in person. He does not. He it's like something's wrong with his face. I can't really like explain it, but it's like not good. And so his choice in clothing, I think, is really interesting because he wears like one piece swimsuits. Why is that? I think he almost does it because it's like a girdle. Well, that's what a it, like, fat holds. woman does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he dresses like your average obese woman. Like that's his style of clothing. And um there's other people who I think they've both worked with Stein or they've like copied his gimmick where they dress up like women and go to school board meetings and say stuff. And I think they're relative I think they're they tend to be funnier and they dress like the way a normal woman would dress. But Alex Alex struggles a little bit. He could use some fashion help. What do you think of the whole cross-dressing thing anyway? I, I, I'm personally against that. I don't, uh, I know that's, you know, a tradition in comedy. I've seen it before, obviously. Flip, was it Flip Sanders or somebody got really famous doing that. A doll um, will send $2 on, on Rumble. I'll, Imagine I'll you're in a, a basement getting a handy from Stein's wife and look over at a rack of dresses. Oh, those look a little well, long for you. Well, they're my husband's. It all makes sense Well, they're my husband's. I'm not into the uh, wearing the dress, putting on the dress. There's a phrase, uh, putting on the dress uh, in Hollywood and that they make you put on the dress to really advance your career, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I think he puts it on because uh, he, he enjoys that type of behavior. No, maybe, but it, once again, like we said earlier, it's all he has. Yeah. All he has is like, um, he just wants moments that go by. He reminds me of like a fake conservative Jack Doherty. Like, there's no substance. He has nothing to say. So he just needs viral clips and viral moments in order to get any sort of traction or any sort of people coming to his thing. So all he has is cross-dressing because, oh, that's so shocking, a conservative cross-dressing or fighting with other people or calling AOC names or shoving sausages in children's mouths. Like that's all he has because it's just shocking. Or feeding off, a black honestly. guy a banana. And it's like, feeding this shit's not banana. even funny, though. And the whole cross dressing thing, that was, that's was that been a bit since the 1970s, 60s, and before. Like, this, all this shit is just old anyway. Like, it's old and stale, and he just reuses the same bit. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of Andy Kaufman, uh, for instance. Well, Andy Kaufman was a comedic genius. Uh, and Alex Stein is not. <laughs> Right? Like, it's just the same old bullshit, repeated bits, and big booty Latina, right? I heard him saying that again yesterday. It's like, dude, is, 
is that you're still trying to live off that, right? Like it's just, it's almost it's almost sad. If I, I would feel sorry for him if I didn't despise him, um, because I do feel sorry for him. I you, you got a better him. heart than me, maybe. Yeah, okay. I dislike That's- him. And I feel sorry. It's both. Like I, because I, I thought he had some potential. Like I really did see something in him. Um, and so did my friends. Like a lot of my friends used to like him and had them had him on the show and you know wanted him as a fellow content creator in our little circle. And he lost it. Like nobody wants him around. Nobody because they know if they invite him, he will cause a scene. He will cause a mess. He will cost my friends thousands of dollars. And they don't want someone who's just going to cost money, cost energy, get them to lose subscribers. They want... Um, Little bits and $3 oh, I just got here. So up, sorry if you covered it. But a Hold quick up. take on Ben Thorpe's now, future. I'll, I'll let you get to that. But finish your thought there. Finish your thought. They don't They don't want people who are going to cost them money. that are going to fuck up their shit. And They'll subscribers. And yes, why yeah. would you? This is a business for like... We can have fun. We can talk about funny things on the show. We can we can be a little sh- shock and awe. Sure. But we don't. We're not constantly sabotaging each other. Like what the actual hell? I've never seen anyone sabotage, 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 and not have any content on top of it. It's it's a lose. I'd love to see how. I it. I don't know how the Blaze contract works. Like I guess we got a little view into it when Crowder and the Blaze were yeah. going at. So I don't know how does he get like a, a, a salary? Plus? Yeah, I think he's on salary. Alex Stein's running. I don't know how the super chat is fucking thing his wife work. running and, around. And hold on, I'll the read these. Finally makes sense. These super chats. He wishes it was still true. I'll, I'll read these super chats out, but I, I think he's on salary, right? And I don't know how the super chat cut works, but he doesn't seem too concerned with super chats. Now I am because that's how I get paid. I get paid by the people. Right. I'm not on contract. The fans pay me, and if they don't pay me, suddenly I'm gonna have to start finding something else to do for a living, uh, because I'll. That, that's what gets me to think that the blaze i kind of think glenn beck was blackmailed i don't have uh, i don't have any proof other than alex stein telling me that he was going to bombard glenn beck and now he works for glenn beck but i something in me tells me that he blackmailed glenn for that position because he's not making super chats he's not making enough views in order to get you know content or um especially in his position right like you know, we yeah. have around 800 here live on Rumble, right? Uh, he's on YouTube with a 250 or 215K channel and drawing yeah. 1,200 last night in the worst hour. Go back and watch his show from last night. I'm serious. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm you serious. It's you the worst. To watch it. It's so boring. It is so boring. And I used to love, even though I hate Elijah Schaefer, I actually genuinely, like, I, I have on good record that he has attacked women i don't want proof of it but i have on good record so i really don't like out Al- or um i really don't like elijah because i think he's bad for women that being said i liked his show like it was entertaining it was interesting i learned about what was happening in in culture i learned i i don't know it was an interesting show from beginning to end you cannot pay me to watch five minutes of alex's show it's so fucking boring it's so i i would it would cause like depression in me. It, it was terrible. And we were raiding his chat and having fun, but like it was still hard to stomach listening to and seeing because it was that bad. And I'm not just saying that because we have beef. It was objectively the worst hour of streaming I've seen this year and one of the worst hours of streaming I've seen in my entire career. Uh, and that's saying a lot because I've been here for 10 years. Uh, and, uh, you know, the Elijah stuff, I squashed the beef there. Nobody went harder uh, with on Elijah than me. Um, so, but, so you're, the guest speaks for themselves. Uh, so I don't want to, I don't want to start that back up. Cancel proof, uh, Paul. But Send $10 I also on won't Rumble. censor the $2 guest for either. Ralph. Two dollars um, for your guest. Six dollars to end Alex Stein's. <laughs> All right, career. now let me read these. Also, don't censor the guests either. So I'll let them say whatever they want. Um, but uh, no matter what you think about Elijah, he's much more talented uh, as a show talented. host. Even now, his show is much better than uh, than anything Alex Stein's doing. I yeah, mean, it's because it takes prep. It takes it takes yes. going looking for news articles, lining up the news articles, thinking about what you're going to say about yes. the news articles uh pulling them up timely like it it takes legwork and and it takes good staff like he had savannah um hernandez and he had 
Like he had everything going for him. And Alex has all of the same resources and doesn't do any of the same shit. Why? Well, Why because literally he... just take the same model and fucking do a, a little bit of work every day. And you could do the exact same thing as Elijah Schaefer, but you can't. Because he's an idiot. I have a degree in political science, so it's nothing for me to talk about politics all day long. And, you know, it, I'm a talker anyway, right? I was just born that way. Some people are just born talkers. And some people are born idiots, like Alex Stein. So he can't talk intelligently about the issues of the day, so he relies on shock humor and shock it's shocking all content and it's, it's all he has it's not funny and that's the problem though <laughs> it's shock stuff that's not funny and he's jumped a shark so to speak uh in yes. my opinion and i don't think uh his blaze contract is going to be renewed but we'll see depends on how good that alleged blackmail that's the be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was about to say. unless he's still blackmailing <laughs> like if he is still working next year we all know that he has some yes i will agree that. i will agree with it then for sure because the show is just tank the channel's lost viewers like it's t it's just the worst thing like how much money does it cost you think for production of that show i probably cost quite a bit you have the studio space you have the lights you have the employees operating the cameras you have like a lot of that stuff was pre-purchased for um elijah was, so like yes. the cameras and yada yada but you still have cameramen you still have you still have upkeep and it, it costs it costs to keep that show going i wonder how much the cost per show is Versus how much they make per show. They have to be because losing it, money on that show. They have to. It, it has to be a money. It has to be a money pit. Has anyone calculated like how because, many super chats so, he gets in an hour? Well, I got more super chats than he did yesterday by far. And of course, I do a longer show, That's but like it wasn't even close. Uh, I mean, it, there was almost no super chats for a show, and I see why because it sucked. Uh, and then okay, maybe YouTube ad revenue, but there were only twelve hundred people watching. So, th and then you got to think about all the people that you got to pay the cameraman, the producers, all this other stuff, behind the scenes staff. That has to be. A money losing show. There's, there's, and he pays guests to come on the show. He pays for their flights. He pays for their hotels. He pays if they're good enough guests. And then a lot of the guests fail too. So money down the drain for guests not showing up. Absolutely. It, I, it's like burning money. It's like, it's like buying a broken boat. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Uh, all right, let me read these. A uh, cancel proof Paul, shout out to him. He says two for Ralph, two for your guest, and six to end Alex Stein's career. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm working on it. Uh, Ada Wolf says Alex Stein's running bit of the homeless black man who is fucking his wife, running around with him all the time, finally makes sense. He wishes it was still true. Uh, is what I he think said. that was one of the that guy who is being referenced in that chat. I think that's the guy he brought to the yacht. Oh, like, did he? Oh, well, yeah, I can yeah, see why so, that would offend people. And he was doing his bit. Yeah, he was doing his so bit. What the fuck? He was doing his bit. And like, I told you who the content creator was. You told me who the con very major content creator, we could just say that, right? Right. But, but like, it's not my. I was but, told yeah, not it, to share, I know. So. I understand. We. So uh, it was a fine. private event, a private yacht thing. It was only like for the people who make the content in this small group and they were not filming on this yacht. It was just to hang out and have a good time. And Alex brought this, this homeless person and some like ratchet looking women and it, <laughs> other people in his posse. And I think was trying to film and cause a scene and cause like a yacht issue. And this would fuck like, it was an expensive chartering a yacht. Sure. It, and so people were like, and it, though that, content group no longer really work together because Alex, because they were like, who invited Alex? Whoever, like, we cannot work together if you're just going to invite Alex or, or any other random person. And nobody admitted to inviting him. And so now the group doesn't really work together anymore because he like causes fights and drama and even internal drama. People cannot stand being around this man. Plus it's a private party. Right. Um, it's, it's not some type of public event, you know, maybe if he's going to pull some hijinks, you know, at a public event or something like that, that's his thing. But this is a private event that from what you said, he wasn't even really invited to really. Uh, yeah. So he shows up and he's doing his bid and trying to film stuff, people in their, in their private moments, you know, you want to be left alone. Like when I'm off air, I go do other stuff, right. You know, I have a life, uh, I travel, I'm in the Yucatan Peninsula. I go see the mine ruins and beaches and Cancun, you know, I do stuff off camera where I don't, I don't want to be filmed. I definitely don't want to be filmed with Alex Stein and his homeless bomb friend, who's not really homeless, by the way. He's playing a bit, but still, uh, it's it's 
just ridiculous that he would do something like that. Um, now, let me read th through some of these, and this has been excellent. And uh, the chat has loved you, by the way, uh, I will say. Oh, thank you. So, uh, now, let me go through these. Uh, let me see, make sure I didn't miss any. Uh, Little Bit says, I just got here. So sorry if you covered it, but a quick take on Ben Thorpe's future. Or can I you? Hate, I fucking hate Ben Dork. I love Grace. Grace knows that if she ever needs a place to stay, and I've offered this to her multiple times, she's welcome to come here. Um, like, I've tried to get Grace away from him multiple times. She snaked me uh, so many times, you wouldn't even believe. We used to have her on the show, and I loved having her on the show, and she's so talented. And we would do these bits, and we would, we would do duets, and get up and dance, and all this stuff. And she's so talented and quick-witted, and he is an anchor around her neck, and she will not let him go. And she's breaking that order, and everybody can see them together. They're openly flouting it, and it's going to end badly, probably. Uh, and I don't know what's going on. If the incest Stuff is really real and or not or if that's just a bit they're leaning into but it's creepy as fuck and i told them both in a private conversation i said the best thing you guys could do would be split up ben can be entertaining on his own right like yeah uh and just going wild type ways but her associated with him and them leaning into that bit if it's a bit which i don't know that and there's rumors and uh, testimony from family that it's not a bit, but whatever. Uh, maybe it is. My advice to them in private was to split up, keep Grace separate. Y you do your own thing. And instead, he uses Grace, pimps her out, and then sneaks onto shows and does all this stuff. It's really about him. He talks about trying to make her a star, but it's really about trying to make himself a star, uh, in my opinion, uh, when Grace is the real talent. And it's unfortunate that she snaked me a couple times, and so now I can't trust her. Um, but she's totally um, under She's totally under her. I still feel bad for her, though. No, you should, you should try to rebuild a connection with Grace. Grace does go off the deep end sometimes yes, she she's definitely flipped out on me a couple of times yes. um but i think it's because of all of the stress that she's under she's under an immense amount of stress like an immense amount of pressure and to have that pressure be put on you by your own family like when i'm stressed i have i go to my family for like i call my dad and i'll chit chat with him to feel better or i'll call my mom or i'll call my sister and I, I couldn't imagine if all of my stress was constantly coming from the only people in the world who are supposed to love me. And then on top of it, the people outside of my family all think I'm banging my dad. Like, I couldn't even imagine that kind of pressure. I, I hate Ben. And the reason I hate Ben as much as I do is specifically because, as you said, he is dragging down Grace. Grace is beautiful. She's smart. She's funny and he is going to be her downfall and it's not her fault. It is. Well, a product she's of a grown woman with agency. And so, you know, I believe she's suffered some like almost brainwashing type, but you yeah. know what I mean? But still she is grown and she could get away from him if she wanted. Right. Like she's she, young. She's still very young, but she's a grown woman. Lauren. She wasn't a grown woman when the brainwashing started. Well, that's true. Um, and once you're brainwashed, um, what did I do? Someone's messaging me and they seem unhappy uh, wow. with this stream. One of my friends. Hmm, hold on. Um, yeah, no, she's great. Mm. Um, I like I like her a lot. Dislike the dad. I don't know what to do to fix it. Okay. I'm sorry if I got into any trouble there. I don't think. Uh... Yeah, one of the people from the yacht incident I, I is was, upset. I figured it was that. We didn't name any names. <laughs> I I know. I thought it was really good. Uh. Yeah. Uh. The people on that yacht probably uh, not too big a fan of me either. Uh, if you want to know the truth, but uh, but uh, you know uh we didn't name anybody it's it was a blind item basically or half blind item and uh so 
I hope I didn't get you into any trouble there. Um, I'm in a little bit of trouble. This person's mad at me for bringing it up, but well, put the blame on me. It's just, fine. Just it's put the blame better. on me because I'm sure they hate me already. Uh, so just put the blame on me. And I think it's been a great, uh, been a great interview, uh, and I've really enjoyed it. And I hope, I hope it doesn't dissuade you from coming back uh, because uh, I've enjoyed having you on the show. Um, now I think there's one more. Oh, he's attack. Oh, oh. This person is saying Alex because Alex knows who the what the incident's about. Now Alex is attacking my friend. Oh, that's what's happening. So Al Bro, Alex, seriously. Like think Alex, sit there for a second. Think about what you did to me. And think like you cost me thousands of dollars. I took a week off of work. I flew to CPAC. I paid for actually CPAC was free for me. Paid for CPAC kind of. Paid for my hotel. You and wasted my time my energy just to meet you and then you treated me like shit you called me a pedophile you interrupted multiple dates i was going on that you were not a part of and now you are this pissy that you are going to go after my friend my friends don't like you dude my friends talk shit about you actively so now you're going and attacking my friend what the fuck is wrong with you alex so like Alex is clearly watching this. The fact that he's of course he's watching. I knew that the whole contacting time. Contacting my friends and trying to get shit. This is why nobody invites him to shit. Well, so I oh, know was, I know a little bit more than what was said, and I think that would be a very bad move for Alex Stein, uh, actually. Um, but he's pretty dumb, so you know I, it wouldn't uh, surprise me if he did some dumb things. But uh, that seems like that would be the absolute worst move he could make, Lauren. Uh, the problem is. I mentioned the incident anonymously. I'm now worried. I probably shouldn't have because I think Alex is now going to talk about the people and talk about the incident and name their names. Well, that would be him that decided to do that. And it was him that decided to act like a fool in the first place. Uh, and so. Okay. I have to call my friend because he's freaking out. Okay. Now, um, cancel proof. Paul sent $10. Well, on I will come back. Alex, yes, stop we'll have you back. Your uh, career is over. Yeah. Cancel proof. Paul said, uh, Alex, stop being a bitch. Your career is over. Uh, and if I was him, I would think long and hard uh, before doing anything. And uh, the person you mentioned, probably not a great fan of mine either, but I actually don't, uh, you know hate that person or anything like that uh so hopefully mm. tell him i wasn't trying i didn't to know start that you anything. had any beef with i don't have any beef quote unquote uh so you can tell them that on my behalf i wasn't trying to um drum up anything there and uh i didn't know alex stein would be that foolish uh to to try to start some stuff so yeah um, now he's like attacking my friends my friend is upset well, and... apologize to that person, and I know we don't get along that great. Apologize to that person. Uh, I was not trying to drag them into it. I didn't think Alex Stein would be dumb enough to, you know, ruin his career further, uh, but perhaps he is. So, um... Okay. Well, my friend's anyway, freaking out. I have to go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. And go. Uh, tell people where they can find you, and please come back because the chat loved you. Uh, so, and we'll talk about something else next time. But tell people where they can find you. Yeah, you could find me on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, um, but I'm kind of leaving all of that yeah. soon. But you should still follow me anyway. I don't know. I don't know why, but just do it. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, you can follow me at Lauren De Laguna. De Laguna is spelled D-E-L-A-G-U-N-A, -A, as in from Laguna in Spanish. Okay. Bye-bye, Lauren. Thank you. Lauren De Laguna, live on the Kill Stream. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Bill Fair. Remember to like and subscribe.